What do you actually do in Sea of Thieves? It's the multiplayer game of the moment. Become a pirate and sail the beautiful blue seas with your friends while looking for treasure and fighting off any other pirates that want to plunder your wares for themselves. The reason the game is so popular and so fun is because the core mechanics of the game are fantastic. Working as a team to control your ship's sails, repair any damage, and then working together to find treasure is extremely satisfying. It also helps that the visuals for the water and the physics in the game are incredible. While the game is reasonably straightforward on the surface, there's actually quite a bit to learn and take in, so eventually you could become a master of the seas. So I'm going to run you through everything that you need to know to get started. Let's begin with your ship. There are two types of ship in the game. The sloop is a one or two person ship. So if you want to set sail on your own or with one friend, this is the ship of choice. It's fast at turning and with only one sail, it's easy to manage on your own or with a friend. The second ship is the galleon and this one is much bigger with three sails meant for a crew of four. The galleon is much faster in a straight line thanks to having more sails, but it's much harder to turn compared to the sloop. Of course, the galleon has the other advantage of having a bigger crew to deal with any repairs and still man the ship. If a galleon gets hit, it can still have two men on deck managing the sails and the helm while the other two go and patch up and get rid of any water. The sloop of course doesn't quite have that option, especially if you're sailing on your own. In an ideal world, you wouldn't be taking on a galleon in a sloop unless you're looking for a real challenge. Best to use its turning speed and manoeuvrability to get out of the way fast. I think now would be a good time to take a tour of the larger galleon ship. Starting from the back of the ship, you've got the rear sails, the angle and length of ropes on both sides, and then of course the helm. If you head down the stairs, you have the middle sails length and angle ropes, again on both sides as well as the eight cannons, four on each side. The ladder to the crow's nest is in the centre, and then the controls for the angle and length of the front sails are just ahead. And then just before the head of the ship is the anchor. Worth noting is the lanterns that are dotted around, great for seeing in the dark, but also make you quite visible to other ships, so you often might want to turn them off if you're trying to be a little bit stealthy. If you head downstairs and then come back on yourself, you've got a few interesting things here. You have your equipment and clothing chest for a start. These let you change your clothing items and equipment that you've purchased, such as tops, gloves, weapons, etc. And here you have an ammo chest where you can replenish the ammo for your equipped weapons. Very important because you've got a limited amount of ammo for each gun. And then straight ahead you've got the map which we will come back to shortly. And to the right you've got the grog chest for getting drunk of course. And the banana barrel. Bananas and food in this game are used to replenish a small portion of your health. So they're very important, especially in battle. Ahead of that is the cannonball storage and wooden plank storage, which are used for repairs and firing at things. If you want to take a cannonball or wooden plank from storage, you can do so easily by pressing the use button on the barrels. If you want to store them and replenish your stocks, you can just equip them and put them away using your item menu, Q on PC, left shoulder on Xbox, and then you can store them away. Downstairs to the next level is the brig, where you can put unruly crew members, I'd be storing your treasure in here too, as it's the furthest point away from where an enemy player can enter the ship. It's also the place that you're most likely going to have to repair the most. Then back up right to the top is the captain's room. This has the quest table, which is where you'll start your adventures or voyages. Sometimes though, you don't even need to start a voyage or an adventure. You might just want to go and explore. And thankfully, there's plenty of things to do on the way. Shipwrecks, for instance, are dotted around, usually quite noticeable because birds flock around them. And if you're lucky, the shipwreck might just have some treasure for you, always worth checking out. On the smaller sloop ship, the position of the barrels, crates and other items is slightly different, but the exact same items are on both ships. So the core parts of the ship are the same regardless of which one that you're in. Each ship has a helm where you steer, and then of course sails that provide the thrust. The galleon has more, three in total, but the principle is the same on both ships. Each sail has two things that you can change, angle and length. If you're steering the ship forward and the wind is directly behind you and catching the sails, they will visually billow and make a sound. So they're going to bulge or inflate and you can see this happening. That's because the wind is behind them inflating them. When this is happening, you'll gain maximum speed because you're going in the same direction as the wind. Great for getting from A to B fast and also chasing other ships down. Now it's the job of the crew to move the angle of the sails and keep on top of which direction the wind is, from all the way far left to all the way far right, or somewhere in between to keep the maximum amount of wind on the sails as possible. Seems simple enough, but not always. 
then the person at the helm on the steering wheel needs to try their best to not head directly into the wind because if you're heading into the wind it's not going to work well for you it's working against you you're going to slow down a lot the length of the sails is fairly simple too if the sails or sail is all the way down then that's going to give you the most surface area for the wind therefore more speed but if you raise it up to say half it will give you less surface area so less speed good for slowing the ship down when coming into a port for example one good tip I could give you for this though is that each sail has two length and two angle ropes, one on each side of the ship, port and starboard if we're being technical. If one person is on each at the same time, say changing the angle, it's going to move much faster. This is very useful if you're in a chase and you're trying to change the sails as fast as possible to maintain a high speed. If you're the man on the helm on the steering wheel, I'd recommend that you always have someone there. Remember a few things, first up, especially on the big ships, this is not a Ford Fiesta, and turns take time if you go full left, and then you realise you've moved too far to the left, so you've got to go full right, and then you've gone too far right, you can end up just zigzagging around. You need to anticipate what you're going to have to do, I'd say around 10 seconds before you need to do it. Also, the wheel, for want of a better term, does have an indicator of when it's back to centre. Look for a gold notch on one of the stalks so you know when the ship is straightened up. The compass there is also incredibly useful for communicating with teammates who are telling you which direction to go based on the map. Right, so now you've got the basics of how to steer and use the sails. And you now hopefully know where everything is. But you're not going to go anywhere without pulling your anchor up, are you? Both ships have an anchor, but on the larger galleon, it takes much longer time to draw it up. You usually need two or three people to make it an efficient process, although one person can do it on their own, it's going to take a long time. Once the anchor is raised though, the ship will start moving, so make sure that your sails and helm are where you want them to be. The anchor is designed to stop the ship from moving when you want to dock for instance, but in Sea of Thieves, you can also use it to your advantage when you need to turn your ship extremely sharply. If you have an organised crew, you can try this out. Say you're heading north, but you actually need to head south. A ship has passed you and you want to give chase. If you hard turn either left or right, you'll come back around eventually. But if you hard turn and get your crew to drop the anchor, providing you've got the hard turn locked in, the ship will slam around hard in that direction and turn on a dime. It's kind of like a car when it does a handbrake turn. And when the turn has finished, immediately start drawing the anchor back up. When you get it right, it's pretty awesome and it can give your ship some much needed manoeuvrability. Now, a pirate ship is nothing without cannons. That's the fun part. On the large ship, there are four cannons on either side of the ship and the smaller sloop has only one on either side. To fire a cannon, you need to load a cannonball from the ship's storage or from your own inventory after each shot. The thing you need to remember with the cannons is that they move relatively slowly, so you often have to lead your shots quite a bit, and then you need to arc them to get the distance. Oh, and you also need to account for the fact that you're on a moving ship, and the wind, and often hitting a moving target. Sounds difficult? Yeah, that's because it is, unless you're at extreme close range. Firing cannons at any reasonable distance at another ship is actually really tricky. It definitely takes some practice. Obviously, the closer you are, the easier it's going to be. One thing you need to bear in mind is that if you hit an enemy ship above the waterline, say on their deck, they aren't going to take on much water. However, if you hit them just under the waterline, water will of course start creeping onto their ship and then they'll have to go and repair, otherwise they're going to sink. It's not as easy as it sounds when you're in a battle because you still need to steer, sort the sails and then try to load and fire off cannons. There's a lot going on. There's a neat trick with the cannons too if you want to board an enemy ship or just propel yourself onto an island without walking or swimming there. If a cannon is unloaded, set its direction and height and you can walk to the front and load yourself in. Pressing fire then releases you out into the sky. You probably will take a small amount of damage when you land, but nothing that you can't manage with a quick banana. Teammates can also fire you from the cannon too. Now if you do manage to sink an enemy ship, remember that any treasure and supplies that they were holding will float in the sea for a small amount of time, so make sure that you take advantage and get it on board. Once their ship is down, they will no longer be able to spawn back on it if they die, which is useful to know. If you die when in battle, you'll respawn back on your ship after a small wait, but if the ship is sunk, you and your crew will respawn at an outpost with a new ship, but sadly, your treasure will be lost. One thing that we haven't touched on is repairing, as you can imagine quite important. In Sea of Thieves, wooden planks are used to repair holes. Pressing your inventory button, Q on PC or left shoulder on Xbox opens up your item wheel and if you select a wooden plank, head to a hole and it will give you the option to repair it. It's as simple as that. 
Also in your inventory is a bucket, so if the ship is taking on water, you can use it to scoop it up. Get some water out, head upstairs and throw the water overboard. You may need to do this when you're heading into a storm too as water can get on board your ship that way. Just keep an eye on it, there's even a cursed chest which can cry and sink your ship by filling it full of its tears. Now each ship has a wooden plank storage space downstairs so if you don't have any in your inventory and you've got some in storage you can go and grab some, assuming that you've got spares. The same applies with cannonballs and this is important to remember. You can carry a certain amount of each on your character but the ship also has storage that all crew members can access. Also bear in mind that if you head towards an island and your ship runs ashore so you get too close to land your ship, you're going to take damage and that usually means plugging up a lot of holes. Now when you're in the heat of battle or you're running around your ship, there may be times when you will fall off. Embarrassing, but it's happened to me a few times, don't worry. You think you're being smart, standing on the side, and then you hit a wave or a cannon comes at you, and in you go. Thankfully, all is not lost, especially if you've still got crew on the ship. Swim around for a bit, and you might see a blue flare. Swim towards that, and it will be a mermaid or a merman, and it's something that's interactable. If you find this guy, press the use button, and it will then spawn you back onto your ship. Useful to know if you do get lost from your crew. Okay, so if you've been watching all of this so far, you'll know how to fight other ships, how to sail, and hopefully how to slow down and dock as well. I suppose that we'd best know some other things too, like how to navigate. I showed you where the map is, downstairs. But before we start to navigate, we need a destination. Well, in Sea of Thieves, you can start your quests or voyages from the captain's table here. Each crew member can suggest quests and then everyone gets to vote on them. So for instance, if I suggest a quest, it puts a scroll down on the table and then the crew all vote on it, the quest starts. Then when you press E on PC or right shoulder on Xbox, it brings up the quest items or maps. This could be a simple island map or it could be multiple island maps or even just a clue to the name of the island. You then need to combine this with the big map downstairs to work out exactly where you need to go. Usually by looking for the island that resembles the one on your quest map or by finding the name of the island from a clue. And then you can pop down a marker so you can find it easier but with the galleon being so large if you're at the helm you'll either need someone to relay information about your heading to you or you need to keep running back to the map to ensure that you're heading the right way. Thankfully the map has a live update of exactly where your ship is in relation to the sea and other islands which helps with navigating. As long as you get your initial heading correct you shouldn't go too far wrong. But what are you actually heading for? Well there are multiple traders available to you in Sea of Thieves, each offering different quests. The Gold Hoarders trader offers quests to find treasure, whereas the Merchant Alliance offer trade missions and the Order of Souls control the magic and the mysterious. The type of quest you do will depend on what trader you're going for. You could be off digging for treasure on an island, solving clues, or you could be transporting chickens across the sea. That being said, you may also be trying to kill a group of pirates on an island somewhere, and other players could encounter you doing the same thing, or something completely different to you. As you do quests for each trader, you build up a reputation with them, which results in you getting better and harder quests, as well as unlocking unique items and gaining more gold. Let's say that you're doing a gold hoarder voyage or quest. It's giving you an island that you need to head to to find treasure. So you sail there and then you use your map or the clues to work out exactly where the treasure is. You might get a clue that tells you to take a certain amount of steps in one direction. A useful tip is if you equip your compass and hold use, mouse one on PC, your character actually takes steps forward slowly and you can hear them, which makes them really easy to count. The same with the lantern. And then when you think you found the crate, you need to dig it up. That's what your shovel is for. The more people digging, the faster the treasure will be available. Once you've found it, pick it up, carry it to your ship, and you're good to go. One tip for orientation with maps. When you're using a map with treasure marked on it, try to pick a part of the map that's a key point or location so you can use it as a base when trying to work out where the X marks the spot is. A large rock or an island grouping, anything that you can go by as a point of interest. Some maps will have clues on as well that will ask you to hold lights up or play instruments or even just be in a certain place at a certain time and that will reveal more of the map. Very cool and it definitely gives you those Goonies vibes. Keep in mind that islands aren't exactly uninhabited though. Trying to stop you from taking treasure are dead pirates in the form of skeletons. There could be other real players there too. Thankfully you've got weaponry to take these guys out, flintlock pistols, shotgun called the blunderbuss, a sword, even a sniper rifle. Ammo is very limited though. 
Once you've used your 5 shots per weapon, you're done until you get to an ammo crate, so use ammo wisely. Also don't expect the waters to be safe either. Sharks patrol the water, even mermaids who aren't particularly friendly, and of course there are lots of mentions of the Kraken that could wrap their tentacles around your ship. Now that would be a sight to see. And remember, when you meet other players or other crews, sometimes they might be friendly and you can use your microphone or they can use their microphone to initiate a conversation with you. Perhaps you could do some trading, make some friends, make some music together. It doesn't always have to be about fighting. You don't just get the reward for treasure straight away though if you put it on your ship. First, you've got to get safely back to an outpost to sell it. There are numerous outposts on the map, so always look for the nearest one if you're in a rush. Once you take it back to a trader and sell it, you'll get your glorious gold. And of course, increase your reputation with them. On the outposts themselves, you've got a few places to visit. You could head to the tavern and get yourself blind drunk or perhaps just buy some cosmetic items. Traders and merchants sell supplies too, and these can be super important. Barrels are dotted around here with bananas, wooden planks, cannonballs, and they're there for your taking. Remember though, you can only carry so many on your person at once, so you might need to store what you have on your ship to let you take more supplies away. Most importantly, bear in your mind this one thing. If you've got to take your treasure back to an outpost to claim your reward, so do other real players. That means that outposts are very dangerous. Other ships could be docked, or they could be turning up as you're unloading, or just waiting in ambush to try and steal your treasure. It's always a good idea to have a lookout on the ship to make sure that you don't get raided. Something that you might want to look out for too are explosive barrels. These are pretty useful, but also highly dangerous. You might get a quest to transport them and well, as you can imagine, that's a pretty dangerous thing to do because if your ship gets hit and they explode, they'll do massive damage and that's why you can use them to take out other ships too. You could grab one and run on board another ship and shoot it or perhaps drop it in the sea behind you if a ship is chasing you and shoot it at the right moment. Not an easy shot to make but if you land it, it's going to make a huge amount of damage. Explosive gunpowder barrels are a risk a reward. Keep them on board and you might be able to use them to your advantage, but if a stray shot hits you, you could be in deep trouble. And finally, one thing all pirates need in their quest for treasure is music. It's always useful to have a crew member playing either a hurdy-gurdy or the Constantina, you know, just for moral support. Join in and everything will harmonize and even sound really bad when you get blind drunk. So there we go, that wraps it up for now. I hope you all enjoyed this What Do You Actually Do in Sea of Thieves video and found it entertaining or educational. If you did, please hit that like button below to show your support and share it with anyone who perhaps might ask the same question as you did. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.